Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to take a look at emulation on the Steam Deck. Now I told you guys before I was going to be doing a video on this to kind of walk you through how to get emulation working. Now you're going to see from the final product here that I have that we have several things in here. We have the great on Steam Deck, which is standard. We have all my games here. We have what's installed. And then you have this new feature called Collections, which takes a little bit to come up. That's partially because I put it on an SD card and partially because it's a lot of external applications that Steam now has links to. In this, you're going to see that we have uh, Thunderbird Neo in here, which I don't have anything working on. We have MAME Current, which I have three titles working on, Dreamcast, Game Gear, Game Boy, TurboGrafx-16, which I only have the Hue cards working on. I'm still working on getting my BIOS um, checksum correct or getting a new dump of a BIOS on it so I can actually get one that will work with the emulator. It does not like the checksum on my current BIOS, so CD games do not work right now. NES, Master System, Genesis, GameCube, Game Boy Color, PlayStation, PlayStation 2, and Super Nintendo. Most of these, when we do the initial installation, will pretty much work out of the box. This is a relatively simple process. However, there's a couple of these that you're at least going to need BIOS, and other than that, and putting them in the right directory, they should be fine. That includes Dreamcast, GameCube, PlayStation, and PlayStation 2. Once you install the emulators, everything like that, they'll work fine. Uh, out of the gate, TurboGrafx-16 has no built-in parser for it. We're going to have to make one for that, so we're going to do this installation a little differently than you might normally have to. But the first thing we have to do is we have to go out to the desktop. The second thing is you're going to need a mouse. At the bare minimum, you will need a mouse for this process. It will make more sense as we go along. However, part of the parser requires you shut certain things down, which kills the keyboard and mouse functionality on the actual Steam Deck itself. So. What we're going to do is we're going to click the Steam button now, which should bring up the power. And then we're going to click on power. And we're going to switch to the desktop. The desktop is required to install everything that we're going to need to install on the system. So we're going to give this a few minutes. It will take a little bit. And now you can see we're on the desktop. Now, now that we're on the desktop, we need to do a few things here. And this is where having a mouse and keyboard connected comes in handy. I'm going to use the on-screen keyboard for the most part, primarily because I don't feel the need to disconnect my existing keyboard. And it's not really, keyboard is not really necessary for what we're going to do. It's nice and makes things easier. Is it required? No. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go down to this little icon here, which is your Discover Software Center. We're going to click on that, and that will bring up a new featured application where you can go to Applications, Games, Emulators. Before you do anything else, you must install the emulators you want to use. This is not like using a RetroPie build where everything is encompassed and you can just go out and you can add new ROMs. You have to download the emulators individually. The ones that I have installed right now are Blastem, which I don't use very much right now. RetroArch works very well for this. This is just another emulator for it. Uh, I may actually eventually remove this one because I'm not using it. Citra, which is good if you want to do 3DS. Um, BSNES is an option. I tend to not use that one. I do use Dolphin. That is good for Wii, Wii U, and GameCube. I also use DuckStation, which is good for PlayStation 1 and PSX which is essentially the same thing. And as we scroll down here, I think there's like one or two more that I use. I use uh, Medna Fay, which is very good for doing TurboGrafx-16. If you want to do TurboGrafx, you need this ROM. You need this emulator. There's no question about it. Another one that you're going to probably want to get is the PCSX2. That is for your PlayStation 2. And then RetroArch is pretty much a given. I know a lot of people don't like this emulator. Um, I find it's far too useful and too utilitarian not to use it. I don't let emotions get into my way of doing things. Now, RPCS3 is good for PlayStation 3. If you want to do that, I recommend you install that. And then Zemo is good for Xbox. Yuzu is good for Switch. Those are the primary ones you want to click and install those and then once those are installed they will show a progress or an update down here you'll see I have an update for this one right now and I could just do update all anything that you're installing will show up 
down here and we'll have an icon saying, hey, we're downloading this right now. Once those are downloaded and done, you can open each one of them up. So to do that, you'll click on the application launcher, you'll go to games, and then they should show up here under games. You just want to open them one time and make sure that each one of them kind of opens up and runs. That's it. That's all you need to do. The next thing, which is what makes the keyboard more useful in here, is you want to open up your web browser, which will be by default Firefox. In here, you're going to type emudac.com. I'm just going to do it on the, on, on the keyboard here and use my mouse because I'm lazy and I don't want to connect to the keyboard. Bring that down. Once you do that, you'll be greeted by EMU Deck's actual web page. This is a fairly nice, very straightforward web page. As you scroll down here, you're going to see you've got retro art commands for your menus, for your stop, for your fast forward, your low save state, your two save state, etc. Things like that. That'll come in handy later if you want to do save states. And they also have like your steps for how you actually do the installation and listen, listen to me talk, which I appreciate. Down below that, there's download application. Once you do the download application, it will download, it will ask you where you want to save the file. You just click OK. It'll essentially download it into your download folders. You can see I've got MU Desktop right here in my downloads, and I also have a bunch of images because I've been doing some custom artwork. However, there's your MU Des Desktop right there. So you'll run that. And what that will do is that will install Emudeck. And it will also install the Steam Manager app. But I'm going to go ahead and run through this installation here because it'll pretty much drop something around here. So I'm going to double click on this. And this is probably going to break some of my emulators that I have set up. Just minimized. So. Once I clicked on that, it'll bring you up to this menu, and this will take a little bit of time. Don't worry, this isn't going to cause any problems. But it'll ask if you want to install this in easy or expert mode. For this video, I'm going to do expert mode. And there are reasons for me doing expert mode, because it installs more um, community parsers, and it installs more emulator and libraries in here, so I can do more emulation than I could otherwise. So I'm going to click on expert mode. I'm going to choose my SD card because that's my preferred location. I'm not going to have this thing convert GDI, ISOs to that. That's good for saving space. Um, I tend to not use that right now. I may move to that later. Right now I'm going to say no. And I'm absolutely going to say no on power tools. And the reason we say no on power tools is because you have to log in as admin into the Steam Deck. I do not know the password, nor would I share that password if I had that password. So we're going to say no. And do you want to update the Steam ROM manager? On this, I'm going to say no, because I think I've already updated it. Normally, you would say yes, particularly if this is your first installation, but I'm going to say no. Do you want to install Emulation Station DE and all of its cores? Say yes. Select every single one of these on here because this will just give you more flexibility in what you can do. And my mouse latency is a little slow here. And then it asks you what aspect ratio you want on the SNES. I normally use like the 8x7 because I like it. And then they use the 16x9, and but you can change this to the 4x3 if you want to do it that way. I'm okay with it upscaling these to 16x9, so I generally just say okay here. Now, this asks if you want to leave certain configurations untouched. And for this, I'm going to say, basically say I'm going to leave RetroArch untouched. Because I think, actually, you know what, I'm going to leave this alone. And we'll just go through the whole process. So I'm going to leave this alone. I think this only comes up because I've installed this multiple times. Just click OK here if this pops up for you. And then it will run through the installation. This is going to take a little bit of time. So just walk away, get a drink, hang out, think about what you're going to play on it, download some ROMs, whatever you're going to do. Um, look for those BIOS that you're probably going to need, that kind of thing.
and then you'll see it's going through all the various different installations of the different emulators to link them into EMU Deck. EMU Deck is just a good way to not only get your games linked into Steam itself. Oh, it says user's not configured. I never worry about this because I don't plan on configuring this one. This is for Switch emulation. I don't emulate very current consoles. I have a Switch. I have a lot of physical media for it. I want to support the system. I don't emulate this one. That's personal choice. And no, I don't want RetroArch achievements because then I have to make an account. I don't really care about that feature, so I'm going to say no. That's just for achievements on emulated games. Now, it will ask you if you want to go ahead and open up the Steam ROM Manager. This used to be a step where you had to download this separately. It is now packaged with EMU Deck. You no longer have to go out and download this. I'm going to exit right now for the sake of the fact that I don't want to do this right now. I want to show you where you actually put your ROMs and what it's made for you before we go to that step. So I'm going to click exit. At this point, we're going to open up this window here. And on the left side near the bottom, you'll probably see something that looks very much like primary here. This is your SD card. You click on that and you'll have a folder called emulation. If you have any BIOS that you want to use with EMU Deck, you put them here in the BIOS folder. I'm not going in here because I'm not going to share names of like BIOS and things like that that might get me in trouble. However, we are going to go into the ROMs and I'll go through a few caveats. If you have used a RetroPie, you are probably used to putting your Genesis games in a Mega Drive directory. That is not the default case here. They use Genesis, not Mega Drive. But you can see you have a wide array of various different folders. You're just going to put things in the appropriate folder and then you're going to go in and you're going to start using the parser. So you've got your Game Boy, you've got your Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color, Genesis, etc., etc., etc. You'll also notice you have a lot of MAME emulators on here as well. Um, MAME is one of the hardest ones to emulate because they have multiple different emulators. Some things work good on some emulators, some things work good on others. They also have Final Burn Neon on here. Alpha is also installed, but does not have a base parser. You will either have to make a custom one or use Emulation Station or RetroArch in order to test that. That involves a lot of kind of dodgy work. This is where, by default, you will install TurboGrafx. It's called PCE or PC Engine. But we're going to go and close out of this now that you know where this is. And we're going to open up the Steam Manager app. Uh, this is likely going to be a small nightmare for me because it's going to, since I reinstalled, remove one of the emulator custom parsers that I set up, which uh, we're going to say no to the system update. So you will see here on the left, you have a lot of various different parsers on here. If you go into any one of these, like say we go into the Game Boy one, it will tell you where the Steam directory is. It will tell you where the ROMs directory is, like if you don't know. Right here, the very last part of this is where your ROMs need to be stored for it to find it in the simulator. If you have anything on any of these and you want to test the parser after you've gotten your ROMs in there, you can simply come down here and click Test Parser. It will come through and it will give you a list of everything that it was able to find. You can see I've got quite a few ROMs on here. I will say the parser test is complete. That means this works just fine. Now, I am going to have to, one, run a test on this and see if I've broken anything by reinstalling this. So now that we've basically checked each one of these emulators, what we're going to do is we're going to go to the top and we're just going to go ahead and do a quick preview and generate an app list just to see if it actually generates anything like it's supposed to. So we're going to click Generate. And you should see it start to populate various different pictures and links. And you'll notice up at the top, it's got a number of remaining providers while we're sitting here. That's the number of providers it's going through trying to get images for each one of your games. The games will work even if you don't really do this step. This step is primarily important because it links everything into the Steam Deck into collections, which is kind of what you want out of this in the first place. Once this finishes running, we're going to go ahead and add one more custom emulator and then we're going to actually go back in and you're probably going to see a bunch of duplicates and trash in here because I didn't clean mine out before I did this. So I'm probably going to have to do a bunch of cleanup, but it'll at least show you how the process works. The cover art. 
Now, you cannot save this to the Steam Deck when it is running Steam. That's why the mouse was key. You have to go down here to Steam, you must right click on this and exit Steam. Once you do that, it will eventually shut down Steam. You have to wait for this icon to completely go away. It will take a few moments. You'll notice it finally went away. Okay, now that everything's been retrieved, we're going to just kind of scroll down through here and see how we did. So far, it looks like we did pretty good. Some of the cover art is a little dodgy, um, and we'll go into that in a minute. But you can see we've got a lot of cover art. A few things are missing, like here and here, because of naming conventions on my ROMs, or they just didn't have anything for it. You can. This is easily fixable. You can actually add your own cover art. We'll go into that. For right now, we're going to save this app list. You must save this app list. Let me make this full screen so you can see this. Please save your app list. Otherwise, all this work you just did goes away. It'll say merging VDF entries. And then you're done. You can now close this out. Now, the next thing you want to do is you want to go ahead and go back into gaming mode or at least open up Steam. I'm going to go ahead and go back into gaming mode. It may jack things up a little bit. Sometimes when I have a, an external monitor connected to this and I go back into gaming mode, it doesn't make the resolution quite right and some wonky things happen. All right. Now that we've finished getting everything ran and installed, we're going to come back in here and we're going to click on the Steam button again. And we're going to go to Library. Once you do that, you're going to come into your main area here and you're going to notice that you now too have an area called Collections. Inside this collection, you should have any ROMs that you added into any directories that you have. If you go into any of these, it will bring up a list of the various different games that you have, along with the cover art that it's been able to find. You may notice that some of the cover art is missing, either due to naming convention or some unknown factor. At this point, you can go in and you can actually set up individual artwork for here. You cannot do this in game mode. Uh, doing this in game mode will bring you nothing but sadness and pain. I do not recommend doing it. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at Game Gear here. Apparently I have two entries for the Incredible Hulk. I'm going to go ahead and remove one of these because that's because I've been goofing around on this thing so much that I caused myself no end of pain. Now, we're going to go ahead and launch one of these just to make sure it works. And it does. Fantastic. So we're going to go ahead and jump back out of that. And we're going to go ahead and do some more work. What I recommend you do, once you've got this in, is that you go into each one of your collections and you just make sure that one or more of the games in here work. You can do like a firm, thorough test after the fact, but just make sure that the ROM is set up properly and that most of your files are going to work. You'll notice, like, since I've launched the one on the Game Gear, I'm not too worried about that. I'd probably go to Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color, etc., and more along the lines of the ones like GameCube, PlayStation, PlayStation 2, and Dreamcast to make sure that whatever BIOS I had is actually working appropriately. Right now, I'm going to go ahead and go back out to the desktop and show you guys how you can add some custom art. So we're going to go back to power again, and we're going to switch to the desktop. Now that we're back at the desktop again, hopefully you guys are starting to enjoy this because a lot of this process requires you to be here, we're going to open Steam from here. This is different than returning to game mode. It's still Steam, looks different, and you have more features. So when you open Steam from here, you can look and you can see that you have all your collections over here on the left-hand side. Let's go ahead and make this a little bit larger. Now, you'll notice that I have Contra here, etc., etc., etc. So I'm going to scroll down to my game gear. And we're going to look for the Hulk which actually seems to have its cover art here, oddly enough. Pull the main collection. Do that. There we go. So now we have the collection pulled up here just by clicking on the collection title. We're going to basically right-click on here. We're going to manage and set custom, custom artwork. So what we're going to do is I'm going to browse to my downloads where I've kept these. Assuming I can find that. Downloads. And then I have the Incredible Hulk title here. Which I'm going to go ahead and open that. And that will set this to pretty much the title screen there. Now if I click on the game here, you can also set the background. Set custom background. 
I'll click on the Incredible Hulk again, and you can use different artwork for either one of these. Now, if I do this one more time, oh, that removed the background. I'm going to go ahead and set that there again. Right click and set a custom logo. And then I will choose the Incredible Hulk again. So that gives you a logo, a background, and the actual title itself. So if you go back to Game Gear here, you'll see all these are set here. Now, if I close out of this, and I go back into game mode, and I keep from screwing up, which I've done repeatedly today, we should have some results. Okay, now that we're back into game mode here, I'm going to go ahead and click on Steam and go back to Library. And then it will default us back to the last library we were in. You can see we have the art for Incredible Hulk. If we come in here, we have the artwork set up exactly the way we wanted it. Now, you can make this any artwork you want. You can name these collections any way you want by going into the parser and renaming them um, simply by going into the, the curly brackets inside there and changing the name. You can name this Game Gear Awesomeness or, you know, Genesis Rules or whatever you whatever you want to name it. It does not matter. Um, name it Super Nintendo is Poop if you want. I would probably do the reverse and name Genesis Poop and Super Nintendo Awesome. But, you know, that's just me. I'm, I'm more partial to that one. I'm sure I'm going to get downloads on that. So hopefully, this is pretty much giving you a rundown of how emulation works on the Steam Deck and how you can kind of get it running on the Steam Deck. Now, a few caveats that I have noticed while operating on the Steam Deck is that if you come in here and you run any one of these games, it will want to default to using the gamepad itself, using the Steam Deck itself. For many of you, that may be a problem. If you want to use an external controller, you can do that. You will need to configure the controller in the emulator, and then when you come in here and you're sure that the controller configuration works, you're going to have to do one other thing. You'll notice when I come in here and I launch this, the game will come up and it will want you to use my gamepad. Now, I will have to click on Steam. I'll have to go to View Game Details. Go over to the controller. And then you'll see here where it has, up at the top, it has Steam Deck and Controller 1. It always defaults to Controller 1. Right now, Steam Deck is Controller 1. You will have to go into Reorder Controllers. and move the Xbox One controller, whatever controller you have, to the forefront. That will make the controller one show up here. What that means is, is now you can use this individual game with your external controller. You have to do this each time you come into the game and reorder them. It does not by default choose to use the external controller first over the actual gamepad. So if you're streaming games and you're moving between games, this might be very frustrating for you. If you're just playing one game and you plan on being in that game for a while, this is a pretty quick, easy thing that you can do in order to do a workaround for wanting to default to the Steam controller itself, assuming you have this con connected to a TV. Just keep in mind, you're likely going to have to do this each time. So the emulation is really meant to be more done in handheld mode or having you hold the Steam controller, the Steam Deck itself while you have it connected to a TV or another device. So just keep that in mind while you're operating through this. I'm going to go ahead and back and reorder this one more time. And move that up and leave that like that and then go back. And then I can go back to my controller. At this point. Now, before you guys leave, you probably noticed that I already had Turbo Graphics running. And the reason I clipped this out of the order is because it kind of caused me some issues when I tried to do it while I was doing the rest of this. So, reorganizing this in the video a little bit. So, now that we've tested and checked a lot of the other games and added some cover art, let's go ahead and work on Turbo Graphics. So click on Steam, click on Power, switch to Desktop. Now that we're on the Desktop, we're going to go back into the Emulation Station. Well, not the emulation station. We're going to go into the Steam ROM Manager app again. And here you're going to notice we have our list of parsers again. Now, what you'll normally do is you'll click on parsers and we'll choose from the community presets. You will scroll down until you see NEC Here it is. NEC, PC Engine, Super Graphics, 
RetroArch Flat Pack. So once you see that one, you will select that one. I'm going to scroll down to the one that I already have configured. Because once you select that and configure it, it will show up down here. You'll notice the configuration titles, the NEC, PC, Engine, Super Graphics, RetroArch, Flatpak, Beetle, and it's GX. You can see here the Steam Directory, and like I was talking about earlier, anything inside this section here, inside these curly brackets, you can change to anything you want the collection to be named. Here's where you're going to set the Steam Directory to. It'll be home, deck, dot local, which is a hidden directory, usually, share, Steam. You can just type this in, or you can browse to it by using the Browse button. The ROMs directory, usually that's going to be in a run, media, and then this, and then emulation, ROMs, and then PCE is where TurboGrafx is commonly stored. If this does not show up when you click Browse, you can simply click this in, you can simply type through this, or you can bring up your file browser. You can scroll down to where your SD card is, assuming you're using an SD card. Click primary here, and then click in here. And this will give you the directory where your actual SD card is. As long as you key this in properly, you should be able to get to the rest of this and be able to fill this out. Once that is all clicked in and that's filled in, you want to scroll down here, and you want to make sure that this user's club has PCE, PCE, SGX, and SGX in here. That way it will look for all of your CD games and it will look for your TurboGrafx PCE games as well. Once you're done with that configuration and you've got all that saved by clicking the save button, you will click test parser and it will run through and it will run a test on what has been parsed. At that point, what you will do is you will scroll back up, you will click preview and you will run another list. You'll generate another list. You'll make sure that you've closed out of Steam. You'll save that. You'll go back in, and you should have your Turbo Graphics in there and running. Now, before we leave, since I've wasted so much of your time, let's show a few of these games actually running. So let's go back to gaming mode. Okay, now that we're back in here, let's click on Steam. Go to Library. And we're going to move out on the on-scene collections. We're going to come back in. And we'll just start with Dreamcast. <laughs> so we'll go into Dead or Alive. Uh, mostly because I did Crazy Taxi the other night. And I, I got a copyright claim for using... I want to say Fall Out Boy. Um, you can see this comes in here. This actually looks pretty good. We're going to survive real quick. Just so you can kind of see it run. I really prefer Kasumi. So we're going to go ahead and jump out of this. Back out of here. And then we will go to GameCube. Because I know you guys probably want to see GameCube. So we'll jump up and pull up Mario Kart. Uh, not Mario Kart, Mario Thousand Tours. So you can see, I do have GameCube running. So GameCube runs perfectly fine. We come back out of here. Let's go ahead and take a look at PlayStation. Let's pull up, say, so we're gonna pull up Darkstalkers 3. Let's boot up the Metal Slug Anthology for PlayStation 2. And you can see here, I have a Metal Gear, Metal Slug, my Metal Gear running on PlayStation 2. You might be asking yourself, why did I do this as opposed to picking a more complex game? One, I just really wanted to have another way of playing Metal Slug and to play a lot of them because I have trouble running those on some certain emulators. Uh, secondly, it was just a way for me to test. I really just wanted a game that I could test to make sure that the emulator worked, that my BIOS worked, and things of that nature. Now, 
Uh, we've pretty much reached the end of the video as far as I'm concerned. I've shown you about as much as I can. If you guys have any questions or any requests or anything like that, feel free to leave those in the comments. Uh, let me know how I did. Let me know if there's anything you're still confused on. I'll do the best I can to help. I also recommend that you join the Discord for the AMU deck itself. There's a bunch of really nice people in there, and they always try to get back to pretty much as many people as they can and help them out. And they're constantly adding new features and things like that, and you can be notified of that if you're in the Discord. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and sign out from here, and as always, till next time, happy gaming.